Hello Aluxers and welcome back. This is gonna be one of those videos, so buckle up. We want to preface this by saying that everyone is free to do as they want, but please know that short-term decisions, people go broke trying to look rich when it really doesn't matter. In a society that revolves around social media, everyone is peacocking trying to play status games. We believe that Randy Newman said it best, big hat, no cattle. Pay attention to this phenomenon. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. So let's cut the intro short. Here are 15 ways poor people try to look rich. Number one, your car is more expensive than your house. What's up with that? Have you noticed that actual rich people buy safer cars that go unnoticed while the pretenders do their best to stand out? Once again, peacocking, but this time with dire financial consequences. Cars, very much like large TVs, are not an investment. They're actually one of the worst expenses you can make from a financial perspective. Why would you buy an expensive car when you're still paying rent? And don't even get us started on your Chrysler 300, you know, the Walmart Bentley, and the whole expensive rims on trashy cars phenomenon. Nobody who's actually rich buys that kind of stuff. Number two, they brag about money. Okay, here's the truth. Rich people don't like talking about money unless it's a business deal that's happening. Money is like the gas you put in the tank. You bring it up only if you're running low. We said it once and we'll say it again. Poverty screams, wealth whispers. In wealthier circles, it's actually faux pas to bring up money in conversation, because if you really have money, it's irrelevant how much you spent on anything. The fact you're mentioning prices is showing that it's a really big purchase for you. The more you think about it, nobody mentions how much you paid for a pack of chewing gum. Number three, bedazzled anything and sequin dresses. Rhinestones, ugh. Everybody thinks they're trashy, apart from poor people, who love putting rhinestones on everything, and we mean everything. Poor people love showing off their bedazzled items like it's some kind of status symbol. Step away from your bedazzled iPhone case, your jeans, your Starbucks cup, and everything else. Sorry, girls, but nobody finds these things attractive. Stop doing this to your nails. We think it's the appeal of being shiny, but not in a good way, in a cheap way that everybody knows is cheap. It's the same appeal for sequin dresses. And speaking of shiny things that have little value, number four, they buy zirconium and try to pass it off as diamonds. Have you seen these folks walking around with massive chains and bling strutting around like they're the next Lil Wayne? Most of these are fake. You can cop a diamond and gold-plated bracelet for 14 bucks on Amazon, or you could get not one, but two diamond dollar signs all for the great price of $9.59. In the words of J. Cole, you probably sneeze too hard and this could break. There's actually a YouTuber called Unghetto Matthew who goes around a mall testing people's stones with a diamond tester that proves most people play pretend. As a rule of thumb in life, stop spending real money on fake things. Number five, bad plastic surgery and fake tans. They say never cheap out when getting a tattoo or plastic surgery because it definitely shows. So many people walk around with what is obvious bad plastic surgery. These girls be strutting around with Jaja -Ja Binks lips or worse. It's gotten to a point where some people can't even close their mouth properly. And you know, it's the same with breast implants and tattoos. Now it doesn't stop there. Fake tans are another status symbol the poor like to play. This is because getting a real tan in the winter months requires flying to a different spot in the world where you can still find some favorable sun. Because that's too expensive, people just decided to spray paint their bodies walking around with what is borderline blackface in some cases. And the men do it too. Number six, they rent or borrow cars to go on dates. 
We understand the idea that one should always try to punch above their weight class if they want to improve, but it's gotten to a point where people are taking out short-term loans to rent cars and pay for meals in order to impress girls in the hopes of getting laid. That's why he pulled up in a Benz the first time you met, but the next time he took an Uber since his car is in the garage right now, because, you know, he's doing some upgrades on it. It's the same reason why he doesn't allow you to touch any of the buttons in the car or gets mad if you open any of the compartments. It's not his car. The notion that one spends money to impress people who otherwise wouldn't be impressed by who you truly are is like living on borrowed time. Eventually, it catches up to you. You know what's better than fake it till you make it? Actually making it by not sabotaging yourself so early in the game. Number 7. They Overdress At most, rich people dress appropriately. Poor people have no idea to dress depending on different situations. We've seen numerous times ladies coming in high heels on a sailing trip or to a garden party. Wealth comes with options and variety. Just because your friend lent you her pair of Le Boutons and your mind reads that as expensive, wearing them to a garden party reads poorly to everyone else. The more you try to impress others with your outfits, the quicker true wealth is to dismiss you. Number 8. There's less money in the bag than what you paid for the bag. Here's the deal. Stop asking for expensive bags until you can afford to buy them yourself. What's the point of having an Hermes Birkin bag worth in excess of $10,000 when you haven't paid your utility bills for the past three months? Bags and shoes are to many women what cars are for guys. As a matter of fact, not even because guys buy cars to impress girls while girls ask for bags to impress other girls and signal that they're doing better than they are. Unless you're personally worth over a million dollars, you shouldn't buy a luxury watch or a luxury bag. Your balance sheet says you can't afford it. Number 9. An impressive fence, but not so much behind it. You know those people who put lions on their fences and have impressive gates, but they're unable to heat up the house during the winter months? You probably do. Why is it you've got a Versace gate, but you can't afford to put pavement or at least concrete on the ground? Number 10. Name Dropping You've made it when you don't need an introduction. You don't need to associate yourself with other people for them to take you seriously. Name dropping is, by definition, deliberately mentioning someone famous, even though it's not necessary or adds to the core of the point you're making. It's circumstantial or network flexing. These people never talk about the things they've done, but instead try to use other people's clout to put themselves up on a pedestal. They want credibility through association. In our experience, these people are celebrity collectors. They would do anything to add your name to the list and then leverage your credibility somewhere else, all with the purpose of getting themselves access. You and everybody else are like a trophy they like to throw around. The only appropriate time to name drop is if you're meeting someone new and the person you're about to name drop is a close mutual acquaintance or friend. A while back, we made a video called 15 Rules for Being a Gentleman, which you can check out by clicking in the top right corner. We strongly recommend you watch or re-watch it after this video. Number 11. Cash You don't expect literal money to be a sign of poverty, but that's the world we're living in. People withdraw their rent or mortgage payment money and carry it around as if it's pocket change. Nobody rich flexes their $1 bill stack on social media. We've got a lot of love for Soldier Boy being one of the first celebrities to subscribe to Alox on YouTube, but the money phone situation needs to stop. In the words of Jay-Z, y'all on the gram holding money to your ear? There's a disconnect. We don't call that money over here. And that's because actual rich people don't carry around cash and $1 bills like a stripper who had a productive night. It's all in your bank account. Get this right. If you can actually withdraw in cash all the money you have from the bank, you're not rich. You might not know this, but it can take up to a month for any bank to give you $10 million in cash or more, and there's a waiting period and procedures that all need to happen. Not to mention you're going to pay a hefty cash withdrawal fee. Number 12. They prioritize design over utility. And it's hilarious when everyone sees you do it. 
You girls end up looking like Zaya Dahar in the white dress going up the stairs at the Versace show in Paris from several years ago. Rich people value quality over design. That's exactly why most rich people appear to wear boring clothes. Most of these people are actually wearing really expensive brands, they just don't buy flashy products targeted toward poor and middle class people. Instead, there's a quality driven layer of products most of y'all don't see on billboards. As a rule of thumb, the less comfortable something is, the worse you're going to feel in it and people can see comfort. Number 13. They pretend entry-level brands are luxury brands. Pandora, Michael Kors, Coach, Tommy Hilfiger, Hugo Boss, these are just the tip of the iceberg. These are all mid-range products targeted to the middle and lower class. These break as easily as fast fashion products, only you pay a bit more because you're trying to look richer than you actually are. We mentioned earlier there are different tiers of quality that luxury brands use. There's more than one Versace. You have Versace jeans couture and then actual rich people Versace. The same way you have the $100 Valentino bags, and then there's the Valentino Garavani, where bags are around $3,000 each. Balenciaga, through their status-focused marketing, got poor people paying $1,000 for mass-produced sneakers, money they can barely afford. These brands leverage their name recognition to get you to pay more for generic products. And if you actually meet someone who is wealthy, they can immediately tell that you're only status signaling without even having a proper understanding of the luxury market. And speaking of brands, number 14, you are a walking billboard for brands. Okay, so who's wearing who? We get the idea that you want to take pride in the fact you can now afford to buy superior brand products, but a tiny logo or no logo at all is more impressive. Good design is timeless and quality doesn't need to yell. You can recognize a classic Burberry trench coat from a distance without needing to see the iconic pattern. When you're poor, you want the recognition brands give you because you're using these brands to go up in the social hierarchy. When you're rich and successful, it's the exact opposite. Who you are as an individual is more valuable than the brand you're wearing, which is why putting a brand on display would actually cheapen the perception of those around you. Can you imagine someone like Elon Musk or Bill Gates wearing a full Gucci tracksuit? Even more so, we were shocked to find out that people actually leave the tags on their clothing or products just so people know they bought them new and not secondhand. I mean, just why? Number 15. Fancy place in a shitty area. The last item on our list has to do with the environment in which you live. You spend most of your life in and around your home. When you look out the window, what do you see? Poor people spend more time inside the house, right? While rich always focus on the view. Long term, it's better to be the poorest house in a rich neighborhood than the richest house in a poor one. Your environment has this power to shape your future, so use it to your advantage. Hopefully you won't fall into the trap of any of these 15, but since this is a conversation and we want you to join in, what are some ways poor people try to seem rich? What do they do? Let us know in the comments and it can serve as a bit of a wake up call for some people. I mean, like we said in the intro, people go broke trying to look rich. And as for those of you who are still watching, here's your bonus. This one is quite different from everything else on our list, but if there's one thing to take away from this video, it's that honesty is a very expensive gift. Do not expect it from cheap people. These are the wise words of Warren Buffett and we couldn't agree with him more. The richer you are, the less you feel like you need to lie because there's less at stake in terms of personal image. The more solid you are as an individual, as a business or brand, the less need for creative embellishments there is in your narrative. In our experience, brutal honesty has been one of the most effective tools for growth. Put the truth out on the table in its rawest form possible. It gives you something to work on and a point to start at. If you're looking to grow, always start with the truth. Now, if you've made it up to this point in the video, please write the word truth in the comments and click the like button underneath the video. The YouTube algo has been crushing us lately and we need all the help we can get.